Welcome to the Fast Lane Lifestyle. I'm Asafa Powell and this is my wife, Alicia Powell. And, you know, this morning we're having a great conversation in the bed, of course. You know, we just woke up. Always and, in the bed. <laughs> yeah, man. And I was saying to her that, you know, we we both, you know, we have um, such different, you know, upbringings. I mean, it's similar, it's, it's similar but, but there is a difference yeah, as but well. Kind of difference, different because you you're like your your entire from like 10 to maybe 18 you know way different from from yours from my from sure. what i can remember because um i grew up you know with my mom and dad you know at home so i was living at home like pretty much you know i was the last child so i was the baby sheltered. of the family you know the baby so i was sheltered you know, so I've been with my mom from, mom and dad from a very, very young age and my brothers and all that stuff. But you, for you, it was different. So maybe you can, you know, start. Yes, about let's, that. well, let's start from the beginning. I was born in Ghana. I lived there till the age of nine, almost 10. Um, at people, first, well, at first I did grow up in a two parent household. People, people would say, people would say, people from Ghana don't look like you. And what, let's correct this. <laughs> Ghana, not Guyana. Cause yeah. a lot of times, so Ghana that's in West Africa, grew up there, moved to Canada, actually moved to a town. Well, I guess it's a small city called Red Deer. Did you know that? Red Deer? Yeah. See, if we quizzed you on this, you wouldn't know. know. Rudolph, the red nose reindeer. I don't know. Any, I don't so, know. <laughs> so Red Deer, and to share a little bit about how Red Deer was. Yeah, deer meat? Of course, they do hunting, all that stuff. So why no yak like you wouldn't eat deer meat? Because I never ate it then. It just, the, I but cannot. You, say, you just say you had it. No, I didn't have it. I would see, you know, what's that called? When they have the stuff in of the head oh, and they, they put it on the wall. wall. Oh, okay. Yeah, so a little bit about Red Deer. When I moved there, I was living with my auntie and uncle. So that's my dad's um, side of the family. Mm. Um, to get into that, I would go to school and my dad obviously is white. So if a lot mm. of you don't know, I am half Ghanaian and half English, but my dad's family migrated to Canada. So I'm Canadian. We throw that in there because I am mm. Canadian yeah. and proud. Need, need my passport. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I got married to you for a passport. I know though. you always say you're that. You're not going to give it to me? Soon. You have to prove it. Soon. Okay. Prove your worth. <laughs> So living in Red Deer, when I first moved down there, a lot of people couldn't factor or understand how I was related to my uncle. They used to think I was adopted. Oh, because and he was, is a white... Um, yeah. So um, And pretty much I was like the only black kid in the school. So mm -hmm. they couldn't believe it. And they used to be like, you obviously have to be adopted because you're from Africa, was you lived year? in a hut. That year was yeah, I had the place? puffy curls and everything. And it actually got to the point where I used to straighten my hair to try and fit in mm -mm. you know i had my hair straightened every day and i damaged it but um to get a little bit more into childhood at the age of i believe 14 14 yes i ended up being in foster care my auntie i was living with was bipolar so it was a lot so, of so before that like like um the communication with your mom and stuff when you just move. Um, and I used to, she used to call a lot. So we used to talk mm. on the phone. And actually when things were getting crazy, I used to be like, oh my God, this lady I'm living with is crazy. You know, mm -hmm. but my uncle is very, like, he's chill. And I love African him. African never and wanted to come over there. Yeah. <laughs> or, and my, worse, oh gosh, my dad. My dad never actually liked her in the beginning, you know. Oh. So um, she used to call. But anytime I would speak to my mom, she, you know, back in those, not back in those times. I don't want to age back in myself. Those times. Like, come on, you have a look at age for you too, you know. No, I, not necessarily. I, we're the same age. We got married. No. And when I was standing in front of you, the pastor told me that we are one. I don't want your age. I'm we not taking one. your age. <laughs> so we have to share the, share the age. You, you add them together and you cut them in two. You know, oh, no. Whether you right? like it or not. Oh. What does it say? Your birth certificate? Hmm? What does it say? <laughs> I'm not working with that right okay. now. Okay. <laughs> working with what the pastor told me. We are one. Look at you running away from 40. All right. But, um... <laughs> So she used to listen on the landline. Mm -hmm. So I never really felt comfortable talking about a lot of things. So oh, there was no privacy. She was in the know? other room listening. Yeah, oh. because I, I think she knew she was being, you know, crazy. And wow. obviously, I don't want to use the word crazy oh, when you're movies. going through by, movies, when you're bipolar, mm -hmm. just a lot of different emotions. You're not sure what you're getting one day. And 
it was it was uh, so, for oh. me as a young teenager mm -hmm. that was just something I couldn't understand. So I used to go to school with like scratches. It was one day she it was snowing and in the neighborhood I live in they mm -hmm. have school buses. So we'd hop on the school bus and get to school. And I had my winter boots on, but I never zipped it up. And she was she was yelling at me to zip it up. And I said, well, I'm going to be late, but I'm going to just do it as soon as I get on the bus. And I don't know, that blacked her out and she just started like choking me. And I went to Whoa. school with like scratches on my neck. And so this, I just remember my uncle just standing there and just watching her. It's like he was scared of her. Oh. And afterwards, he would just be like, oh, I'm sorry. And... You know, all these things. So to make a long story short, yeah. I ended up in foster care. And I mean, I think throughout my journey of growing up, I was really blessed with mm -hmm. really amazing people in mm -hmm. my life. You've been through the good and the bad. Mm -hmm. So she was like heaven sent. She was amazing. Wow. And, and he was in foster care for her? Yeah, I actually still kept in contact with her, but she passed mm -hmm. away in 2017. So she was, she was really good. Then I ended up in Toronto mm -hmm. and I was actually living with my one of my dad's good friends and that didn't work out either so I just ended up um living on my own and I ran track and I think that kind of helped me be a lot more grounded when kids were like partying and trying this and trying mm -hmm. that I thankfully had um I owe him to this day Ben Johnson in my corner mm -hmm. to he was the father figure that I needed at the time and I remember being on the track. No, no one was allowed to talk to me. So everybody swore I was his daughter. Yeah. Because not uh, one single, single guy could speak to me. And man. but yeah. but 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 listening to that, you know, like a lot of people would just see you mm -hmm. and just assume. I mean, that's what people do. Right. They see assume. you. That's that even until this day, people are still doing that. They see you and they just assume a lot of things. And um one thing I really like about um being married to you is that it i think i think i think it give it give these it gives these people your headache it gives them headache <laughs> gives them migraine every night because they don't know anything about you like they, I, they can't walk on the road and discuss anything about you they can't say oh yeah man she she did that with she was with that guy she was with that guy she was but, all over the place with but that person i think for me my per perception of life at the time because it's not that my dad was like some deadbeat you know mm -hmm. I think the way I really take in things is like even growing up when I would see him he went through a very bad divorce mm -hmm. and crazy crazy things happened I mean I was too young to really understand what mm -hmm. was happening he had he was married previously had two kids before my mom and mm -hmm my mom and then they had me together so I mean he had a good life he moved to Ghana and at the time he moved everything into Ghana his mm -hmm. money everything and he trusted her family so they pretty much ended up like taking and robbing him and yeah. he just ended up broke so he turned to you know drugs alcohol he was just really depressed and I just ne never really like judged someone by well you should have done this and you yeah, should have done that because that's what I'm saying. Yeah, life this, like life happens yeah, people, you know yeah, people, so, people like to do that because um I just learned maybe, from it. Maybe they would have um, they would have been broken by this. Right. Like this would have sent them in a different But different I owe path, I also owe path. that for my mom. She was mm -hmm. so strong in the process of everything and she was a that's go getter. Where life, she, that's where her life kind of gets right. Similar, she you know? um, she did everything possible. She had to sell things here, do this while yeah. doing her catering. I was still in a private school. She made sure everything with mama, mommy. Yeah, she made Mommy sure everything, best. everything Mommy happened. Best, so even yeah. even without being with her physically, she still had that foundation. Like mm -hmm. she's, as I always say, I always want to be like my mom. I feel like mm -hmm. women, girls always want to be like their mom. Yeah, so she shaped that for me. I definitely, definitely love, you know, I, I love her story for real because um, that, that inspired me. Yeah. So it must, can inspire somebody as that you don't have to, because you, you 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 didn't have your father for since you was about twelve, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you yeah. know, and and you you still be, you still became a proper woman, right? Yeah, a proper woman. I get married to me. Well, at, it, it at, does. The, yeah? <laughs> if your it father take, was still take. alive, what what would he say about me? Hmm? I don't. Would I love me. Don't. I I don't necessarily think he would have um not liked you. I mean, he never really liked Jamaican men. Man, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but, but why, 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 why? 
I guess because all the ones in Ghana are just, you know, I guess based off of perception, you know, I always say never judge a book by its cover. You have to learn. But I guess we're we're talking about childhood just Mm -hmm. to inspire people. And for me, the route that I took was I am not like I'm not a victim to anything Mm -hmm. that happened to me. And anything that happened to me, obviously, God had that happen for a reason because he has so much more in store for me. Mm -hmm. So I want to reach to that height. If I had to go through tribulations, I want to see what's at the end of that tunnel. Right. So I've always been been that way. And even to this day, I used to run track, like I was saying, but then I got approached with modeling. So Mm -hmm. I was working at guests as a Sales, um, sales, sales rep. Sales rep. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then I was modeling part time, so I was really like give up a job at, hustling. And then when it started to take off, they then I, I um, just started working full track. time. So they give up two things I could benefit from. You know, they gave what? up track. I could have met you earlier. Well, technically, you could mm-hmm. have met me earlier. I could have met you earlier. You were... And guess I could have get a lot of free clothes. <laughs> I don't think that's how that works. <laughs> Put some clothes in your purse you, or in the back. You get a percentage. But what you yeah. and I have in common mm-hmm. is growing up in church. Man. Yeah. Wow. You want me to talk about that? Growing up in church. I remember Listen just being me. young and you're Listen tired me. all night. Listen to <laughs> me. Listen to me. I don't know if me and you grew up in church. No, same I think thing. yours My, is a little oh bit more, you know, My different. Mine was by force. <laughs> so I think. <laughs> I don't um, think but, I had an option but yeah, either. You know, my my um my childhood, you know, um I was last I am the, baby. the last yeah, last of six boys. I think my parents yeah. went back for the girl and I here comes oh, Asafa. Oh gosh, I can relate to that. Here comes Asafa. <laughs> and um yeah, my name my name is Ethiopian. So you were uncle, destined to marry an African woman yeah, from the get-go. Yeah, from from born, my African, my African from a born. But yeah, you know, I, you know, going to go go to church every Sunday, every Monday, day of the week. Wednesday, and any other day. I don't no, remember. Every day of the week. <laughs> just there, say yeah, it. but if it wasn't church, it was school. Right. And if it wasn't school, it was in my backyard building carts, building box trucks. You know, just making my own toys, you know, um, you know, feeding the chickens. You know, nice. we had we had a chicken coop at the at the yard. So, you know, for me, that that that's my entire childhood until I was eighteen. That's all you knew when all then I knew. Church. Real life happened. I didn't even know I didn't even know no no, no music. the only music I knew was I knew some Beanie Man and some Bounty Killer. You were sneaking because around at listening school. No, to that. at school, at school, the kids would beat the table. Oh. And, and um, they would DJ. You're and like, stuff. What is that? That's all right. That's all right. Because no, none of those music wouldn't play at the house. Right. And I wouldn't go anywhere to hear those music. You know, so that's how I you know, I, I, I got to hear some some dancehall music because on Sundays they just play old time music called Ska. Your Ska on the radio. You wouldn't know that. I don't know you, what that you is. That. Yes. Yeah. I'm a feel like, I feel like all them things come from Ghana and uh, Nigerian. So what is that? What mm-hmm. what is the music is a mixture. Oh, okay. It's a mixture, all of that stuff. But yeah, I went to Charlemont High School. I went to Yorton Primary first, then I went to Charlemont High School. And when I went to Charlemont High School, I started to, you know, get a bit more exposure to a little something. Mm, badness. To girlfriend <laughs> and all that stuff. Little you know? <laughs> And, um, you know, I was, you know, I think I was just destined to be, you know, a star from day one. Well, let, let's even um, talk about, I think I had seen that picture that always circulates about your yearbook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah even before my yearbook. In my yearbook, I wrote that yeah. I wanted to be the fastest man in the world, not knowing that I would which ever is, do track. Which is crazy. I said I wanted to do, be the fastest man in the world, and I wanted to be famous. I wanted to be a famous athlete. You see the power of and, the tongue yeah, and, and brick, manifestation. And all that stuff. Crazy. You didn't even know. Yeah, it's crazy. And um, yeah, I wrote that in, in, in the yearbook, not knowing anything. So, and... You went from yeah. being sheltered to all of a sudden being the superstar. That's yeah, a crazy, I was, yeah, that's I was, a yeah, I was, big transition. I think I was, I was always just going to be a star, no matter what. Because my, my father, my father used to put my name on all his cars. Oh, on wow. The, on, the wind, on the windshield. You windshield. were the favorite child. Yeah, <laughs> a surfer. So everybody knew the name 
I right. saw for in my entire community from I was a baby. Maybe I was his favorite child. I don't I know. I think, yeah, you, you are. Know, but yeah, um, when I think for me, the difference is I think I couldn't wait to leave where you, you know. I you didn't, didn't really have a, a choice. Yeah. Like I had to yeah. grow up. So and at 18, you know, I was, I was, I was on were, my own. Yeah. You, you know, wanted to 18. experience everything and not yeah. be a so shelter. Adult, when I was an adult, because at 18, you're an adult, yeah. right? So at 18, you know, I was on my own. So it was it was a bit different. I mean, I was still a sheltered child, so my, my parents were still involved. I was still getting money from my parents and all that stuff. So it was a bit it was a, it was a bit different for me. But it's good to to see, you know. Uh, I think that that's what helped us as well, you know, because you are very you're a religious person. Mm-hmm. I'm a religious person. You know, you, I think you, you bug me more, more to pray. I know. I'm like, have you prayed before going to bed? And he goes, yeah, "Yeah, I prayed in my head and he's just fast asleep (laughs) snoring. (laughs) Yeah. You, you bug me, you bug me to pray. You, you know, you, um, even during the Bible. Yeah. During COVID, I'm watching my, um, sermons and like, come watch, come sit down with me. But so I guess what you're saying, and even in our similarities mm-hmm. and our differences, it our backgrounds helped yeah. us just mesh everything together. Yeah, and you, you, you. Um, so I went on my own fully at 18, right. and you, you're like. So I guess at that time, while you were figuring it out, I was like, I've been doing this. Yeah. So you were what, six, sixteen? When you started modeling. Yeah, you. but I was, I was gonna say when you were eighteen, I was definitely not. Listen 16. to me, man. Listen to me. Don't go. Don't play the age game with me right now. Don't play the age game with me right now, please. Oh God! Because the pastor said. Okay. Yes. The All whole right. we we are one. Right. But yeah, I started modeling. No, I actually started late, just like the way you started late mm. with um, running. Mm-hmm. I started at eighteen. So. Just, I think, just my last year of high school is when I I started. So, so after, to your friend, your friend, no, your friend. Oh yeah, the story right? of how I got into modeling. Yeah. So it was one of my friends. She used to live in Red Deer. That's how we met, and she came up to Toronto when I was living there. She was really into modeling from even when I met her. Just always wanted to be a model. So she had said to me, "Let's mind you." I always used to get approached about. Mm-hmm. Let's Modeling. yeah. Whenever I was in the mall, that's a typical thing that happens. Like, you should be a model, this that. But I'm like, I'm over here just trying to get through high school. No parents, this that. Like, I can't trust you. So much scamming stuff with modeling, you know. Mm. So I took her. She wanted to go to an open call. So I researched. I said, me being the supportive friend, we can go here, do this, do that. So I went to Elmer Olsen Models. That's actually in Toronto downtown. And as soon as we walked in, I could just see this like old man just staring at me. Right. Are you here for the open call? I'm like, no, I'm just here to support my friend. And she went in. He had one of the agents go in and take her pictures Mm -hmm. and whatnot. And he comes up to me. I want to sign you, but not your friend. So I'm like, but I wasn't here for it. That's how you get enemies. (laughs) <laughs> but I wasn't, I'm not here for the open call. He's like, but I'm telling you, I want to sign you. You have great potential and I want you. Here's a contract. Mm-hmm. So like, hmm, how is this going to go now? So we still went to other agencies and it kept happening. So I got to, I could see her getting upset. I'm like, I would just wait downstairs for you. And I wouldn't even go upstairs. So she still invite you um, after, after that? So mind me, when we're going to open calls, it's like a list of different agencies we're going to in one day. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah. And then one oh. of them actually just did it right in front of her face. Like, I want to sign you. Are you here also? So I'm like, to that friendship. Oh, I just wanted to crawl. I'm um, to that friendship. I mean, after. we're not friends anymore, but for the longest time, like I just told her, you know, I'm going to just try it out and see. Right now it's just really about trying to just make ends meet and... You know, have rent to pay. Just trying to hustle. It's rough out here, baby. It's rough. <laughs> so she, so up until this day, she's not a model. I don't think so. I think she tried. She got signed one time, and just it didn't really work out. 
But Man. we stopped. We I had tried to be friends with her. I used to actually like help her out a lot, and Man. you know, because I know hard times and that everything. Rough. That's rough. Yeah, but she had told me one time, "I'm so sick of seeing your face. I have to see it every day, but then I have to see it in stores as well." Because at the mm-hmm. time, she actually used to live with me because she needed a place to stay. Mm-hmm. So she, yeah, she told me she has to see my face every day and then all over. Because Shoppers Drug Mart, I was doing Sears, I was doing everything. Man, so man, y'all over the place. So I know, y'all right? Star, y'all star. Yeah, I was, I was yeah, everywhere. Yeah, you showed me a picture in New York. Um, what, 2018? Where? Was it 2018 when you brought me to the mall and you showed me a picture? No, I didn't even show you. You seen. You're the one that even recognized me. I didn't even notice oh, that that was yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's me I seat. Just... Me seat on your, on your side. Yeah, 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 yeah. Walking, yeah. walking by. So, wow. life and its ups and downs. So, no matter so, yeah, what you're so... going through, if you're listening to this, mm-hmm. you can you can definitely make it no matter what your background is, whether it's a two parents home or one parent mm-hmm. home. If you're yeah, out there. It doesn't matter because people use play that card all the time. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't, when I like, when I hear that, I'm always like tough. Like you, you, at a certain point, yes, you can sit there and say, but my parents didn't do this for me or do, didn't do that. Everybody has a story. Mm-hmm. If you're blessed to have supportive parents that are there for you and push you, that's amazing. That's a blessing. But if you don't, that doesn't have to define who you yeah. are. You can still make it to the top. It might just be a day where it's like you're having a good day. Things are looking good, but you still might have bad days and just mm-hmm. just keep pushing. I mean, it's the same thing with you, with your career. There's ups, there's downs. Yeah, yeah. You there's know? a lot of ups and downs. Um, even even growing up, you know, like right. uh, like I, I, I see that I, I could have seen I could see that in my family, but I didn't really understand. Right. You know, um, all, all that was going on. It was it wasn't until you know, like I move out. That's Are when you? my parents start being a lot more open with me, yeah, and then I start put two and two together and say, "Oh." So no, that's why sense. I used to go to school without lunch money. Right. And then my father would take the take me lunch at lunchtime right. or whatever it is. Yeah. So it it wasn't until you know uh, my parents they weren't they weren't in poverty, but they didn't have, have it, it right like that. You know, my father was a taxi driver. You know, my mom used to sell in the market. Yes. So with all of that, like you have to actually make a trip run in, in a taxi to make money right so yes. you have to do maybe five six trips and when you make your first few mm-hmm. trips that's when you you um you make the first money to put gas in the car right so then, they, then yeah, yeah so then you have to make a few more trips mm-hmm. to then to buy my lunch plus five more b- brothers right because six boys yeah that's... five more brothers lunch and then my mother would go to the market and like people don't have to come and buy shoes same time. Maybe somebody buy a shoe maybe in the night and right. they're there from the morning. So like I didn't understand all of these things until, growing up, you know. So I I thought we were rich, right? Until you got because older, because we were one of the only people with a car, not knowing that my father borrowed money to get that car to get that car from a friend and was paying back mm, that person for so the, on top of feeding you. He still has to. Yeah. Pay off his debt with the vehicle. Exactly. Yeah. So you know, I didn't, I didn't understand those things growing up. You know, and you know, I'm sure you didn't understand other things. The only thing you knew is that you had curly hair. <laughs> <laughs> what did what did you call you at school? Oh, uh, in Ghana. In Ghana, there's a term. I don't know if you you probably know this term. Half caste. That's all half, I used half to. Half caste or old caste? No, no. Half, half, half caste. caste. So I guess uh, it's a term when you're what, half what, and half. What is what is to call him <laughs> in a in a Jamaican crossbreed? Oh, jeez. These <laughs> terms. I'm so like, wow. In Jamaica, I call people crossbreed. Like, oh, jeez. But you know what? When you were talking about lunch money, mm-hmm. it reminded me of um, when I moved to Toronto, I had this like a community of friends. Mm-hmm. Well, not friends. I mean, I had Eva. I met my best friend Eva in Toronto. We went to high school together and she came from a similar background, like single mom and, you know, struggling and stuff. So, we would show up, you have lunch money? No. And then we'd put together whatever we had and mm-hmm. get lunch. Sometimes whether it's like, as you guys, whether it's bun or a patty, would share it. And then we would actually go to track. We wouldn't even have money to go to the mm-hmm. track at mm-hmm. um, North York. And we would jump the fence. But she would always make me go first, obviously. Yeah, I, I remember <laughs> you telling me this story. 
Tell, tell me a story. You guys jump fence to go to training. And when they yeah, catch you, when they catch you, they kick the, you out. I would have to hide in the bushes. And then I'll be like, yo, it's, it's time. You can come. You can come. And then we'll just walk on the track and act like and You go we've through all of that there. not to run track. Right. Can you imagine? But I think that just <laughs> kept us out of trouble because at 16, mm -hmm. we had other um, friends and classmates that were going partying and they were doing this and mm -hmm. doing that. So the route that we chose mm -hmm. was... Yeah, and when I, when, I tell, when I tell people that I didn't go to a party until I was 18, they can't believe. Because here in Jamaica, people had parties at 15 years old. True. You, you see boys, girls at parties. Yeah. You don't, and, yeah. and the thing is, you can't tell because you, yeah, every, everybody days, looks, yeah, you know, like adults in the, in and, the parties. And when girls put on, I think more so with boys, yeah, you can maybe tell, yeah. but girls we're with makeup joke, and everything. We have a joke here in Jamaica that... You will look at the ankles because you know when you're at school you wear socks, so the socks put leave a tan on your ankle. So they look at the ankles to see if they have a tan. That means they just come from school. <laughs> so you know to run, run yeah, far. You, know, you just have to run away from from those from those ones. But you know it's 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 pretty interesting, and you know for 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 you as well. Like I say, you know your story, you know really should should really inspire a lot of people. Yeah. To know that, you know, you, you don't have to go the that other route. route. Yeah, yeah, that route, sure. like everybody without, you know, I, I that find that there is, there's beauty and struggle because it makes you mm. who you are today. So there's mm -hmm. a lot more that I can tolerate or have the threshold for where a lot more mm. people don't. They might just fold where mm. I'm like, I'm yeah, ready. In today's society, let's, let's uh, you um, need that. like pretty girls just doing the same things. Yeah, like, yeah. I mean, what I see some 13-year-olds doing on Instagram, I'm like, I didn't even know how to, mm -mm. to yeah. do that. At this. I felt so exposure. uncomfortable, you know. A lot of exposure. Yeah. Yeah. Even now, mm -hmm. as a mom and as a wife, like, if I'm wearing something that's, like, too short, I feel Man, that made me, I that feel strange. Me, that made me fret. Yeah, that's you're a policeman over here. Yeah. Just, <laughs> that, that, I'm so, I'm so scared for <laughs> even my daughter. Yeah. I'm so scared for my daughter. You know, and um, that's why I tell her that I didn't want no more girls. You know, maybe that's why you didn't get a girl. You know? Maybe. Could maybe be that. But why. I mean, then you do come from a family of like okay. a lot of boys. So sorry Azaf to, was supposed to be my, my girl. To and then he you, just baby. I'm sorry He to disappointed disappoint everybody, but we still, we love him. <laughs> Is Anna Yalom a disappoint? Everybody. Hmm? Everybody had Man. the long faces. But Man. even regardless of today's world, we, we started this podcast as well to just tell our stories and mm -hmm. to inspire both young men and women that mm -hmm. you, can, you can... The fast through. life, you it know, as, as much as our mm -hmm. thing is like fast lifestyle, mm -hmm. everything, everything happening in our world is so fast, mm -hmm. but it's okay to not get there fast because you don't, yeah. you might see something that they might look at you now, but they don't know the steps that it took. Yeah, when, the we, say, work yeah, when the we say sweat. fast life, we don't mean money. No, we don't mean it's in a negative way. Yeah, we don't just mean money, 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 this money. But that, right now, everybody know. just wants the fast, the faster yeah, way to get things. Yeah, so right. it's, it's okay to, and don't grow up too fast. Like if you don't have to, mm -hmm. don't force yourself to grow up because there's a lot that I missed out on and being a child. You know, mm -hmm. I had, while people had parents to go home to, I, I'm not, I'm not to I had, for any, 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 anything. What? I'm not to be blamed though. What do you mean? Because you always say I, 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 I took away some of your, your young girl days. Yeah, I so said you took away my hot girl days. You met me at 21. That was like my prime, New York City. Me too. I was in my prime too. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't here alone. What prime? Yeah. No, when I met you, I was still in Canada and then you moved to New York. Yeah, that's true. So I yeah. actually was 20. So you never, you never, you get to live with somebody hot girl days. Where? Hmm? You just came and just capture me down. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's that was the plan all along. You I know. know. I yeah. figured. Yeah, God was saving you for me. That's that, that, we that. Could, we, could, we that. could look at it. You we could look that. at it that way. When I close my eyes at night, that's what I pray. You are envisioning yeah. that's all African queen. <laughs> yes, you are African. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, goodness. So yeah. You know that 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 will be the end of our episode one, and we hope you guys enjoyed it and stay tuned for more. Yeah, much big up, <laughs> much respect. Remember to subscribe to the Fast Lane Lifestyle. Make sure a whole lot more of these conversations to come. We're just getting a lot started. more of these and, and better conversations. Yeah, of course, of course. Uh, this, this is, is the episode first one. one. This is the first one, so we have, we have to, to shake go a bit out easy, a little, you know, you know and. 
have it's to like go a bit easier. We, we can't go too deep into <laughs> everything yet. You know, we have to just reel you guys in and, you know, you guys know that a lot more interesting things coming your way. For sure. Right? So much, much love. Thanks for tuning in. What time fall asleep last night? How am I supposed to know? I was, I think I fell asleep first. I was tired. Man. <laughs> <laughs> Bye.